So I support parental education choice. At the micro level in Oklahoma, we now have 32 charter schools. Maybe now it's 33 with the one that's been approved in Seminole. And we do have the Lindsay Nicole Scholarship Act for disabled students, which is benefiting students in Bartlesville attending our Paths to Independence Autism School, a school that has now attracted parents to our community because of this option for their students to receive the best possible education in the eyes of those parents. Um, we also have the tax credit scholarship, which you do the donations through the Opportunity Scholarship Fund. And that is benefiting parents in Bartlesville and probably other places in Washington, no water in Rogers County, particularly here because we do have two alternative, uh, we do have two non-public options, uh, scholarship programs for uh, children attending Wesleyan and uh, St. John's, although the Catholics have their own tax credit scholarship program. So it's a, it's a nascent program in, in Oklahoma. Um, there have been two education savings accounts bills offered in the past few years. Neither one of them ended up getting a vote. I did support the one this year. I, I vote on specific legislation. I can't do hypotheticals, but I liked this one because, first of all, it could not have been enacted without a teacher pay raise, because the teacher pay raise for you is the most important issue. Secondly, it was limited to only 1% of the public school population, which they estimated would be about 7,000 students. Uh, unfortunately, they, they limited it to the three largest counties or metropolitan areas, 150,000 or more. So it was limited in the scope of students, but it would have targeted the parts of our state where we have the greatest failures in our schools, depending on how you measure it, the largest number of failing schools. And it, it identified the poorest of the poor. It was limited, first of all, to homeless children. Uh, you may be familiar in Oklahoma City, it's been there almost 25 years, Positive Tomorrows, that serves homeless families with the goal of stabilizing the family and the child and getting them up to grade levels so they can go to public school. Their goal is to get the children back into public school and have them be prepared enough that the excellent teaching they receive there, they can benefit from. So homeless children were to be um, offered uh, the savings accounts option first. And then it was those who were the most poor could receive up to 90% of whatever the per pupil expenditure was. And in the second category, it's all based on free and reduced lunch, and I'm sure Representative Sears knows all the details of those, and, and those of you who work in public education would know, um, could receive up to 60%. And then the balance would go back through the district formula. Um, this was several years out. Because as we've discussed here, a teacher pay raise may or may not happen this year. And then to set up a savings account system would take some time. And then the question is, how many of the poorest of the four would access this system? Obviously, these parents need to be engaged. Um, but I just want to give you an example, because I think we get very defensive when we talk about parental education choice. And you as teachers take this personally as an insult to either your abilities or your commitment. And it's not intended to be that at all. And I think it's prudent in the 21st century, looking at 21st century education, to make sure that we lose as few children as possible to whatever causes them to not do well in school. So here's my example. Bullying is a real problem. And you can have all the policies in the world, and you can monitor your school site as much as possible, but that undercurrent, that society of children, inside and outside school, cannot be monitored 24-7 by you. So in spite of your best efforts, bullying takes place. I will give you an example. I know of a family in Oklahoma right now whose child is in a very good middle school, but that child has started to lose weight. That child is starting to suffer academically, and it has nothing to do with the quality of the teaching. It has to do with the bullying. Those parents are considering moving their child to a private school. Those parents can afford to do so. What do you do for the poor parent who, despite your best teaching, best teacher, best school, best district in Oklahoma, is poor and their child is suffering because of this issue? What do we say to them? It's okay to lose you? I don't think so. If those parents had an option, 
That's one more Oklahoma child we could see graduate on time with a plan for their future, be successful. So when I look at school choice, I look at it from the parental point of view, from what's going on in that child's life, that may or may not have anything to do with what's going on in the classroom. Charter school movement in the United States is now 25 years old. Homeschooling, which we never used to talk about, is Main Street, and it's vibrant in our community and throughout uh, District 29. So for those reasons, I do philosophically support school parental choice in education, and, uh, but there's no, there's no bill out there to do anything about education savings accounts right now.